Hello friends, welcome to my channel. So I have made a MCQ video with respect to GST. So try to evaluate yourself. Okay. So coming to the first question, try to pause for a minute and try to answer this question. Okay. So here the question asked, the center will levy GST that is integrated GST in the case of interstate supply of goods and services, imports, exports, supply to and from special economic zone. So which of the following statements are not correct? Okay. So try to answer this. And the answer for this is none of the above because the integrated GST will be levied in all the cases that is during interstate supply of goods and services, during imports, during exports and even during supplies to the special economic zone. Fine. And uh, coming to the next question that is consider the following authorities that is Union Finance Minister, Revenue Secretary and Chairperson of Central Board of Excise and Customs. So which of the above? have voting rights in the GST council. So it should be the union finance minister. That is option one only. So guys, you should be knowing that the chairperson of central board of excise and customs will be a permanent invitee to the GST council. But however, you will not have voting rights. Plus again, the revenue secretary will be the ex official secretary to the GST council. But again, he will not have voting rights. Okay, so the voting rights with respect to this question belongs to the union finance minister. So the option is one only. Okay. And coming to the next question in the GST re regime, the center has to power to levy CGST, SGST, integrated GST and UTGST. So which among the following can be levied by the center? And here the answer is one, three and four. Okay. Because the state GST will be levied by the states and it will be collected by the state okay and i think few would have been confused with respect to utgst see friends utgst will be levied only in those uts which does not have legislation and the power to levy utgst lies with the center okay so here the correct option is one three and four and coming to the next question that is with respect to e -way bill so consider the following statement with respect to e -way bill that is the e -way bill is a document which can be generated online and uh, this must be generated when goods whose value are more than 50,000 are shipped. And the third statement is this e -way bill must be generated both in the case of interstate as well as intrastate. So try to answer this and here the correct answer is all of the above that is option B. Okay. So you must be knowing about the e -way bill which is a document which is generated online and this must be generated when the value of the good is more than rupees 50,000 and this should be generated in case of both interstate as well as intrastate. Fine. And coming to the next question, consider the following statement with respect to GST. So GST is a destination based tax. Against the present concept of origin based tax, GST will be levied only by the central government and the central government will decide the tax rate of CGST. So try to answer this. So select the correct option from the codes given below. And friends, here the correct answer is one only. So GST is a destination based tax. Fine. And the second statement is wrong because GST will be levied both by the central government and by the state government. So GST will be in dual form that is central GST as well as state GST. Okay. So even this option 2 is wrong and the tax rates of GST or CGST or SGST will be decided by the GST council. So it is not the central government which decides the tax rate of GST. So whatever GST it may be, it is not the central government who decide the tax rate. Rather, it is the GST council which decides the tax rate. So you must be knowing about the tax slab like 5, 12, 18 and 28 percentage. So it is decided by GST council. Fine. So here the correct answer is only one that is option A and coming to the next statement that is with respect to to the GST council. So the GST council will consist of prime minister, union finance minister, minister of state in charge of revenue department and state finance minister. So select the correct option from the given coach. So this must be easy for you. And here the correct answer is option B that is two, three, four. And friends, you must be knowing the prime minister is not a part of GST council. Okay. So all the others in the given option other than prime minister belongs to GST council. Fine. So here the option is B and uh, coming to the next question that is with respect to CGST bill. So recently CGST bill has been passed. So the tax rate of CS CGST will not be exceeding 20 percentage. CGST will be levied on the supply of goods and services within the boundary of the state. The central will levy the CGST. So consider the following statements, which of the above is are correct. So here the option is D that is one, two and three. So all the given options are correct because in CGST bill, the highest tax rate one can levy with respect to CGST is 20 percentage. So the CGST rate cannot exceed 20 percentage and this will be levied on the supply of goods and services within the boundary of the state. Okay. And friends, again, it is the center who will levy the CGST. Okay. So don't confuse yourself with respect to levying of tax and uh, deciding the tax rate. Okay. 
So have a clarity. And coming to the next question, that is about GST network. So consider the following statement with respect to GST network. So the GST network will provide a IT infrastructure and it will provide services to central government, state government, taxpayers, and other stakeholders. And the second statement says the central GST network will collect tax for the central government. And the third statement is like this GST network is incorporated as a private limited company. So consider the following statement, which of the above is are correct. So here the correct answer is one and three okay so the gst network will provide it infrastructure and they will provide services that is back-end infrastructure services with respect to information technology okay and other than this the gst network doesn't have any work to do over here so they are not someone who will collect the taxes for the central government fine i hope it is clear to you and uh, coming to the next question that is with respect to national anti-profiteering authority so which of the following is not the objective of national anti-profiteering authority so try to answer this and here the correct answer is to reduce the price of the products okay so friends if you consider all the given options then you can say the appropriate answer would be option c okay so you must be knowing the objective of anti-profiteering authority is to check unfair profit making okay and uh, they will all also ensure that any decision which is taken by the gst council that is the benefits of reduction in the tax rate is passed down to the consumers so they will ensure that and they will also see to that the rules which are bought out by the GST council is implemented without any delay. Okay, so they will try to minimize the delay of implementing the rules made by the GST council. Okay, so A, B, D are the correct statements and uh, they will not reduce the price of the products until or unless unfair profit making is there. Okay, so here the option is C. And uh, coming to the next question with respect to composition scheme. So you just look at the following statements. In the scheme, a small taxpayer can get rid of tedious formalities and he pay tax at a fixed rate of turnover and the second statement says input tax credit can be claimed by a dealer opting for this composition scheme and the third statement is this scheme is available to all the taxpayers of goods and services whose turnover is less than 1.5 crores okay so which of the above statement is are correct so try to answer this and uh, the correct answer is a one only so this scheme is available for taxpayers and they can get rid of all the gst formalities and uh, they can pay a fixed GST amount with respect to their turnover. But friends, again, they cannot claim input tax credit. Okay. So a taxpayer opting for this composition scheme cannot claim input tax credit. I hope you got the point. And the third statement is also wrong because this scheme is not available for all. Okay. So it is available for those taxpayers whose turnover is less than 1.5 crores. But again, any businesses under 1.5 crores turnover cannot opt for this scheme. There are few exemptions. And friends, again, service sector is also not eligible for this composition scheme. So except restaurant services all the other services are not eligible for this composition scheme and even there are few limitations in manufacturing sector also fine so here the correct statement is one and we'll move on to the next question that is with respect to gst council so what i did is like i made seven statements in a single stretch in order to make you revise about the gst council okay fine so try to answer this the decision of gst council are taken by two-third majority and uh, the center has weightage of one-third of the old cast and the third statement says each state has a single vote in the GST council and the fourth statement the GST council is a non-constitutional body and the fifth statement is the GST council is constituted by the president and the sixth statement says revenue secretary is the ex officio secretary of GST council and the last statement is the quorum of the GST council is 33 percentage of its total members fine so which of the above statement is are correct so try to pause for a minute and try to answer the given question fine and uh, the correct answer is option b that is two three five six okay so the decision in the gst council are taken by three fourth majority friends fine so it is not two third majority it is three fourth majority and yes the center has the weightage of one third percentage that is the center has 33 percentage of weightage and the third statement is also correct that is each and every state have a single vote in the gst council so irrespective of the size and population of the state each and every state has a single vote fine and the GST council is a constitutional body okay so this happens to be a constitutional body and it is constituted by the president and in this GST council you have a secretary and the revenue secretary is the ex officio secretary of GST council and the quorum which is required for the GST council is 50 percentage okay so it is not 33 percentage it is 50 percentage fine so I hope it is clear to you and we'll move on to the next question that is with respect to harmonized system of nomenclature so 
consider the following with respect to it it is a multi purpose international product nomenclature developed by world customs organization and india is a member of world customs organization and uh, this code will be used for classifying the goods under the gst regime so which of the above statement is correct so try to answer it and uh, here the answer is all of the above okay so this happens to be a code which is used in the gst in order to classify a good okay so they will have a separate code for each and every good so that it makes product classification very easy and india is also a member of wco and this code is developed by world customs organization which is followed by nearly about 80 to 90 nations okay so all the given statement is correct fine so that's it with respect to this video friends so i think i have made a, a complete coverage of gst and if you have any doubt with respect to any question or if you lack clarity then i would say please watch my videos with respect to gst so i have placed five videos with respect to gst and the link of all the videos are given in the description box so you can just have a go through which will make you understand gst better fine so thank you friends thank you for watching